Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the BEARD Primary Education and BEARD Primary Education with Early Years um, Marjon Live course talk. Today we are joined by Mark Andrew Dearden and Sally Eels, who are the programme leads for these courses, and they will talk through all the content and the modules and everything that you need to know about the course. We also have two student ambassadors with us today, so we have Chloe and Simon, so they'll be here to answer any questions you have from a student perspective. Um, my name is Sally and I'm from the student recruitment team, so again, any questions that you do have, I can help point you in the right direction. So the Q&A function is open, um, so please submit your questions throughout the whole presentation and we'll answer as many as we can do at the end of the presentation, um, but please continue to use it throughout. I'm now going to hand you over to Mark Andrew, who's going to start the presentation. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to Marge on Live online talks. Uh, these talks link into the Beard Primary Education and Beard Primary Education Early Years. So hopefully that's what you're looking for and that's what we're going to talk about. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, uh, photos of, of my fellow people here. So my name is Mark Andrew. I'm the, the, the strange title, PAL UG Primary ITE is Programme Area Lead Undergraduate Primary Initial Teacher Education. Uh, Sally is joining me. Sally's a senior lecturer and year one lead uh, deals with all the applications, the interviews and the processes that we'll talk about later on. And then we've got Simon and Chloe, both trainees in year one. I'd also like to introduce to you, and they're not here, Christabel and Chloe, who are our online chat partners. And any questions that you might have after this presentation, if you go to the web page, you'll be able to see their pictures and you'll be able to see a little tag and you can send them an email and you can ask them questions as well. So lots of ways for you to find out about our course. So what are we going to do during this session? Uh, I'm going to talk about the following four things. Why would you want to do primary education teaching? Why would you want to study at Plymouth Marjon University? What is the Beard Primary Education programmes that we offer and how do you prepare and apply for our programme? So let's start with primary education. You need to have a love of learning and a passion for sharing that with children. If you don't like children, you might not want to be a primary teacher, OK? Do you want to inspire children, help them to aspire to great things? If you've got that passion, if you want children to be the best that they can be, then primary education is for you. Do you enjoy being with children and are you prepared to challenge them and challenge yourself? OK, if you don't enjoy being around children, primary education might not be the right thing for you. If you want to be with children, if you love being around children, if you want to challenge them to do their best, but also challenge yourself at the same time, primary education is for you. And finally, are you enthusiastic, committed, prepared to work hard, creative and flexible? If you are answering yes to those things, then you're in the right place. So why would you want to come and study at Marjons? Well, let's go through some of the things that we know about Marjon. Marjon, high quality training and outcomes. That's that, that's something we do well, I think. And we've been doing that well for 180 years. We offer a wide range of placement opportunities across a broad and supportive partnership. Lots of places for you to go out and work in schools. At the end of that, of the course we have high rates of employment and promotion we're well regarded locally nationally internationally there are schools that you go into up in london where you walk in and there will be a marge on person sat in the corner somewhere okay and finally the the, the inspection regime ofsted we're highly rated our last inspection in 2014 was good with outstanding features and we were part of the of of the sweep of of universities with the preparation of the new Ofsted um, guidelines that come in in the new year. We also have high rates of student satisfaction. Now, how do we know that? Let me show you some figures. National Student Survey says that 98% of our students are satisfied with what happens. The 98% the is kind of a mixture of, of, of lots and lots of different questions. Questions that we came out really good at. Uh, uh, staff are good at explaining things. 100% of the course said that, that that's true. Uh, the course has provided opportunities to apply what we've learned. 100% have said that's true. Received detail and helpful comments on my work and mark and assessment has been fair. 100% says that's true. We have a really lovely relationship with our students and in turn our students rate the things that we do. So 
away from our course, the university and the support and the facilities that are on offer. You know, you need to know that Plymouth Marjon University is different. We're small and we're distinctive and that makes us special, I think. We have high levels of individual support through personal development tutors, through placement supervisors and through school mentors, our people that we work with in our schools. There's a high quality academic, pastoral and professional support in the school and in universities. And we've got good facilities and resources. Our primary classrooms are a great place to be. I'm just really sad that you can't be in with in, in those rooms today, but please make a make a trip on online and have a look at our web pages because there are there are there are videos where you can have a look and see what's what happens in our classrooms they're set up as primary classrooms they're not primary classrooms they're set up to give a feel for that primary classroom experience and we provide online support for distance learning and just down the down, down the kind of the, the the road, the walkway from us, there are world class sporting facilities in in our sports centre, and lots of our beard students kind of link into those sp those sports facilities and play on the teams. Uh, it's really nice for us to follow those, and then they take all of those skills into school. It's really nice, really nice. So our beard, primary beard programmes for September 2020 and September 2021 start. There are two versions. One is the primary education with QTS, and that's a focus on five to 11 year olds. And one is the primary education with early years, and that's got a focus on three to eight years. Okay. Now with QTS, qualified teacher status, that means that at the end of this course, you will be a qualified teacher and will be able to go and teach in school. So what does the course look like? Well, if you joined us in the year one and the university based elements, you'll be developing academic reading and writing. We'll, you know, we're very keen on, on, on making you read for a degree. It's an old fashioned term, you read for a degree. Well, that's what you do. You need to read what other people think, their ideas. You ne then need to incorporate all those ideas into your own ideas and your own ways of thinking and that will develop you as a person. We do work on professional studies on becoming the teacher, that first tentative step on becoming that professional in the classroom. We have modules on child development and the foundations of learning, how children develop, how children learn, what they need to learn, how we can help and, ass and assist with that. We have sessions on planning and assessment for lessons, and then of course you will engage in both the core subjects and the foundation subjects in RE. There are sessions that take you through every single curriculum subject. In year one school based elements, you'll be out in school. In term two, two days a week serial placement linked to the modules. And then in term three, a four week assessed block placement. Now, in year one, you work with a buddy, you go in with a friend and you help each other and you work together alongside the teacher and you team teach and you look and you and you and you work alongside to give yourself support and help. Sometimes it's nice to have a fellow student say, do you know what, that wasn't very good or that was really good. It feels supportive coming from somebody who's also in the same position as you. Okay. Move into year two. Now you'll see there's two different colours on this slide. And, and in the first year, both courses follow the same programme. In year two, we split. So in year two, everybody looks at professional studies, developing as a teacher, building those skills. We look at medium term planning and assessment in the schools, the different ways of drawing plans together, cross curricular, thematic, discrete. There's more work on the core subjects for everybody and there's a module that looks at special educational needs and inclusion what about those children who are working outside of the mainstream what about those children who are in mainstream but need special support the module picks up on those elements and then if you're a beard primary education student you'll be doing foundation subjects in religious education and your specialist module which will be subject based now the specialism is, is something that's chosen in the second year and then runs through second and third year. You don't choose that right at the beginning of the course. That choice is made in year two. If you're an early years person, then your, your subjects about planning in the early years curriculum, that whole inclusion of play, which is so, so 
easy to watch but so so difficult to get right in the in the classroom or in in the establishment that the earlier setting is is being placed and we also look at the role of play in learning so once you know about the role of play you can then plan it into that curriculum in school year two uh, in the second term in foundation key stage one or key stage two there's an individual placement it's two days a week to start with getting you into that school getting you to know that school and then it's followed by a six week block placement you're on your own there's nobody who's buddying up with you uh, uh, it's you in the school, but you're not on your own because you'll have a class teacher, you'll have a mentor, you'll have the support of the rest of the staff who will be helping you. You'll also have a university tutor who will come in and touch base and keep keep an eye on you and do observations. Very supportive. In June term three, there's an enhanced placement. It's up to three weeks, an opportunity to develop in other areas. Uh, and, and the enhanced placement is is something that 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 students have really enjoyed. Let me just kind of give you some examples of what they do. They've been to, the list is on the side, Camp Kerno, Dartmoor Zoo, Eden Project, Mission Direct, National Marine Aquarium. They go out and they work with Chicks Respite Breaks in Derbyshire. They design educational trails for the National Trust at Castle Drogo. They get involved with forest school experiences. And experiencing life in Helsinki kindergartens, creating an outdoor focal point for bottle tops within a school, working with the WAVE project and working abroad. This three weeks is about giving you experience of education, perhaps not in a school, but in a wider situation. It allows you to make contact with educational psychologists and perhaps shadow them. It allows you to go and see how special schools work. On a special schools note, we, we provide you with a placement that allows you to go and work in one of our local special schools. New to next year, if the special placement is something that you're really interested in and you spend some time working on the, on the special placement uh, experience in year two, you can then opt to your final placement in a special school. That sets you up for those people who are thinking that SEN is the way that they want to go. Back into year three, year three, trainee to teacher, continuing to develop as a trainee, but moving more to support you for applications and interviews and into your NQT year. We have a number of conferences, one being challenging stereotypes and celebrating diversity, always, always popular with students. And there's a dissertation with an ex which is an extended study, uh, a piece of writing that's going to be about 10,000 words. If you're with the early years, then it will have an early years focus. But for the rest of you, it may link to your specialism. You might write it in maths or in English or in science, or you might choose to do something, something different, transition between primary and secondary schools, working with parents. OK. Breaking down into, into the different courses, if you're on the primary education course, professional studies, current issues for the teacher, uh, everything that will set you up to be that teacher once you qualify. And the specialism module, becoming a subject leader, giving you those skills to take your subject and lead it in school. We talked earlier about um, the, the promotional prospects and, and this is part of that because there is a guide to being a subject leader because you feel ready to be subject leaders the promotion in school comes much quicker. Uh, the BEAD early years early learning in the nursery setting and enhancing the role of the early years specialist and that's going out into this setting and making sure that you also are ready to be the leader in this early setting lots to do university based in year three and in school we're sending you out for a 10 week block placement it's planning teaching and assessing groups and whole class you take on the role of the teacher it prepares you for the nqt year and there are opportunities in this year to be in london schools i'll, I'll come back to that because there are opportunities for london schools at other points as well so we do work with these diverse and supportive schools. We've got a wide range of sizes, types and locations. There are rural, inner city, suburban church schools. They're across Devon and Cornwall. OK, you might end up teaching in a big primary school with three parallel classes and you're working in a big team of teachers all teaching year five 
Or you might be in a small school in Cornwall where all of the children in key stage two from year three to year six are all in that classroom. And in that classroom, you've got 12 children, lots of different opportunities, lots of different challenges, lots of different ways to work. There are opportunities to teach in our East London schools. There are a high proportion of EAL children up there. And, and that gives you a, another skill. We send people up, into Lon up to London in the second year and the third year. So there's opportunities if you're coming from away or, or if you think that this is something that you want to do, but you'd quite like to have a tryout first, then this is the ideal time to do it. In all the schools that we work with, we have trained and supported our mentors and our tutors. They come into the university, they take part in the training, they take part so that they know what the placement looks like, so that when you arrive in school, you are well supported. The mentors in school, the teachers in school are saying exactly the same as we are saying back at the university. And we feel that's really important. The partnership, partnership with schools is a priority for us. So if we think about the university, what, what kind of things happen? So teaching, learning and assessment, how does that work? So we learn through practical uh, workshops and lectures and seminars and personal studies uh, and our teaching are by subject experts. So we've got a really nice group of people who are all leaders in their subjects and taking part in research and further experiences, writing books within their subject areas. Um, it, it feels really strange sometimes when you get an essay in and, and, and students have quoted you and you think, oh yeah, yeah, that's because we are the subject experts. We're the people writing the books. Uh, and so, so you will be meeting people who, who, who know about what they're talking about. So, so that's really important for us. So practical workshops, um, You'll come in and you'll you'll have hands on experience. I've got some pictures up here of, of some of the art workshops there's science workshops going on, the RE workshop, uh, the television is on looking at the birds out in the science room and and, and tracking the, the birth and death of the blue tits uh, and trying to keep keep the, um, the, the, the other the killer birds, uh, the magpies out of the way. So so you the the seminars and the lectures will give you the pedagogical underpinning, the theory behind it, the practical workshops will allow you to take that theory and will allow you to, to, to try out those experiences. And on the way, you'll develop your skills, but you'll also come across the misconceptions and the ideas that children will have, and you'll be able to say, ah, if a child says this, how can I deal with this? How can I make this work? How can I adjust this? How can I develop this? Uh, one of the, the highlights for me, I, I lecture in the art, is that in in over the first two years, I steal uh, in, in the nicest way possible a piece of artwork uh, and it goes in the corridor. So everybody has a piece of artwork on the corridor. Students like are horrified. I don't want to put my work on the corridor. It makes you feel and it makes you aware of how children feel when you put their work on the corridor. It's quite funny. They have this argument about, no, I don't want my work to go on. I don't want my work to go on. It goes up on the wall and they say, oh, yeah, look, there's my piece of work. It looks really good. So practical workshop, hands on experience. We also take you outside, being outdoors, learning environments away from the classroom. There's field work, there's forest schools, outdoor plays, and we try to take all the subject areas out. So some of the pictures that you can see uh, uh, have got the maths group up on Dartmoor. Uh, and, and doing work on Dartmoor, the history group walking around Plymouth and looking at some of the Egyptian houses, the science group are visiting the um, the recycling centre, the history group are at, down in the caves and pretending to be cavemen. Lots and lots of activities where you help with the planning of these activities and you think about the implications of you being adults and if you were going to take children, what would you need to think about? That top photo with the people on the pond, I mean, that's fine, these are adults. What would you need to do to make that safe for three-year-olds, for five-year-olds, for seven-year-olds, for 11-year-olds? What risk assessments would you need in place? And what kind of activities are they going to be doing to make that an, enjoy an enjoyable experience? Okay, so um, I thought I'd also mention that, that the team is, is quite good at smooth transitionings in the face of change. So not only do we do the lectures and the seminars and, and work like that, we also 
have have kind of embraced the, the, the technology and we have lectures and seminars online uh, working with various groups of students. We have gatherings as working and discussion groups. We put students into smaller groups where they meet together online to complete pieces of work. And and we also have whole cohort celebrations. So this picture is, is the 65 odd people involved in the BEAD 3 all meeting yesterday you know up to date yesterday coming together to celebrate their final hand in for the course so 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 just because we're away at this moment in time doesn't mean we haven't got those contacts when I say we work with schools, we do go out in schools, you go out in schools, you do your placement, but we also bring the schools into, into the university. So there are various visits linked to the modules where we'll spend some time in school and the school will come into us. We have special projects that we put on in the university. The Science Week is, is one that comes to mind where lots of primary children are up on campus working with science specialists and, and other people who are involved with that. Storytelling and book weeks, creating special activities activities in the rooms that we have around and taking groups of children into that and various teaching sessions based on DT, based on science. Uh, that's that's um, I make no apology. I'm dressed up as the wolf at the top uh, and we're making books and we're doing book binding and we're creating whole books based on on the three little pigs and the fact that I might or might not have eaten them at this point in time. So working with schools is really important to us. That's what we do. So I'm, I'm kind of going to take a break and have a sip of my coffee. And what about the experience of trainees? We've got we've we've got Simon and Chloe here. Um, so 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 perhaps I could just hand them uh, hand over to them and, and they can give you an idea of, of what their life in Beard One has been so far. OK. Um, so can you hear me? I'm assuming you can hear me. Um, it's been really enjoyable. Um, I came in at the start of the year and I'd done a little bit of work experience, so um, I knew what I was getting myself into to a degree. But um, no, I, it's really enjoyable. Um, I have particularly enjoyed the child development side of it. So that you sort of consider the play um, in the youngsters. Um, and then it's been really enjoyable to sort of just take it forward like from that. Um, I don't know about you, Chloe. Yeah, definitely. It has been really, can you hear me? Is that right? Um, it has been really enjoyable. My first year, definitely for personal reasons, hasn't been the first year that everyone makes it out to be. But the staff are so supportive and really helpful. They're really kind of always there for you, no matter when. Um, they're always there to talk. Um, and one thing I've really enjoyed is definitely placement because before the degree I'd only been volunteering in a primary school and I'd only done a couple of hours at a time throughout the day so it was really nice to have that continuity of going into the school for the whole day and then bringing it back to the university to kind of get other people's viewpoints on how you taught something or how you think the session went and then you can go back into school the following week and kind of consider ways that you could have taught it differently and what might work best for you so it really helps your personal development. Yeah, um, just following on from that as well. It, the lecturers are really key uh, and sort of push mixing theory and practice. So like Chloe says, if you take a lesson in and you teach it and then you get the feedback on it, you, you can see where that theory has helped you, but also where new theory that you might not have considered before that can then le lead to improvements. So, so yeah. Yeah, definitely. OK, that's great. Thanks ever so much, you two. Um, you'll be answering questions later on as well. OK, let's move on. So. As far as assessment is concerned, because obviously you take part in the courses, but you'll also need to be assessed as well. Um, so so what we do is we, we have a number of different assessment formats. There are assignments and essays uh, you write uh, using what you know, what you've found out, what you've learnt on modules, uh, and you answer a question. Uh, most essays are about, you know, anything between 1,500 words and 3,000 words, uh, and you put together your knowledge and your understanding, and you demonstrate that through a critical, critical piece of work. Sometimes we ask for resource packs and posters. Perhaps you can put something together as a as a kind of a, a teaching tool. Uh, or perhaps we ask you to put together a portfolio or a file of work, something that you've collated over a period of time. 
we might ask you to stand up and make a presentation in the first year. Presentations have included um, phonics presentations uh, uh, where, where it's a case of, of, of taking us through how to present phonics to, to early years to key stage one. Uh, in year two, it's a presentation based on your uh, extending philosophy of education and the developing philosophy of education. How is that going and where do you see yourself at the present time? It may that we, maybe that we set up online wikis and blogs. We've been using Padlets as well where people have been dropping information and details down onto that. I've already mentioned that that dissertation. It is 10,000 words. It sounds a lot. We were talking yesterday to our beard threes and one of our beard threes said, I don't know how I managed to cut down my dissertation because once you start writing about something you like, about something you love, you end up with lots of words. I think she ended up with about 25,000 words. We managed to cut it down to 20,000 and then it's actually we've got to half this. So don't panic. After three years, you will be writing. Um, and then the part of the assessment is obviously the teaching practice. And I hope that you've looked at the teacher standards uh, and we match you against the teaching standards as a summative assessment. As we go through teaching standards, there are little steps that we take you through. and We set individual targets. So what are we looking for? I'm going to hand over to Sally because Sally is the person who leads on application and recruitment and looks after all of our first years. Thank you, Sally. I think you're still on mute, Sally. You just need to quickly come off. Thank you. Uh, nice to uh, be with you all today um, and uh, a very warm welcome to Marjon, as Mark Andrew has said. Um, just to, to, to sort of talk a little bit about what we're looking for. Um, I know some of you have already applied for 2020 um, and are listening to this uh, for 2020, but others of you are thinking of applying. But what we're looking for are um, interesting people people with a creative spark, and I'm not necessarily talking about being artistic or anything like that, but actually thinking outside the box um, and thinking of new ways to do things. As a teacher, you need high levels of commitment. This is a uh, quite hard going course. Uh, we make no bones about that, but we uh, like you to be uh, highly committed to what you're doing because that's what a teacher needs to be. Enthusiastic um, to learn, to try new things, as Mark Andrews already said. Um, you need to be able to be open to advice and development. As Chloe mentioned about being in school and taking on uh, feedback and things, um, it's absolutely key to being uh, open to learning um, and developing. Uh, part of that is being reflective and thinking about how you're doing. Um, and we've just had sessions with our first year students to reflect on the year um, and think about how they're continuing to develop. And we're looking for the potential to be a high quality teacher. We're not expecting you to know it uh, all at this point, otherwise you wouldn't need to come on a course. Uh, so we're looking for potential. Is there that spark within you that we can work with you to turn you into a great teacher? So typically what we're looking for um, in terms of grades and things are three A-levels uh, at BBC uh, or the BTEC at triple grades DMM. So roughly equivalent of UCAS points 112. But this is a professional course, and so we are looking at the whole person. So we always interview for every place on the course. So we're looking for your academic ability so that you will cope with the course, but we're also looking for your personality and the personal qualities and experience that you can bring to the course. So if you think you might be falling a little bit short of that, um, don't let that put you off applying because we can be a bit negotiable on, on the points if we think you're the right person for the course. You do have to have GCSE uh, level four or five uh, and upwards in English, maths and science. That is non-negotiable. Um, so if that's something you need to uh, be looking at retaking, that might be something worth considering now. Um, ideally, we'd like you to have some experience in a classroom um, or an early year setting recently because this helps you to decide whether this is the course for you. Um, as Mark Andrews said, you need to enjoy working with children you can work with children in lots of different settings and being a teacher is quite a specific one. So think carefully um, about trying to get a bit of experience. I know at the moment that's not possible, um, but um, even if you are not going to get the experience before you apply, think about how you might have that set up um, for the future. It will help you in writing your application and it will help you at the interview because you'll be able to refer to some of your experience. 
So if you're thinking of applying um, for next year, um, and I've noticed a question in the chat about deferrals. Yes, we do accept deferrals. You do need to have all your qualifications uh, at that point, but then you can defer for a year. Um, but if you're applying for next year, think about trying to get that insight into the role of the teacher. Uh, so if possible, get into a school, but also talk to teachers who you might know, um, teachers of your own um, or family, friends, so they can give you an insight into what the role of the teacher is. And if you're not sure about early years, primary or secondary, um, try to get a bit of experience in those different settings if you can, which will help you to decide which one is really for you. Um, if you're not sure between early years and primary, um, as Mark Andrews said, our course in the first year runs um, alongside each other. So you can easily make the transition from the primary course to the early years or vice versa during uh, and up to the end of the first year or the start of the second year. So if you're not sure, it doesn't really matter which one of those you apply for because the interview process is the same and you can always make that decision a little bit later on. Um, think about working with uh, children and young people. Maybe you've worked in um, with brownies or in a sports club or through your church or something like that. Um, any experience of working with children or young people or even supporting adults, maybe vulnerable adults or um, some of some of our students have worked with um, older people in care homes and things. All those skills are really transferable um, and show that you have empathy and patience in a way of being able to uh, work with individuals. Broaden your understanding of education um, and cu current issues. Keep an eye on the news, see what's happening in schools, have a look at the national curriculum. So those are the key things that we would um, ask you to start thinking about if you're thinking of applying for next year. So um, we have a two stage uh, selection procedure for the BEd programmes. So uh, you need to write your application and come in through UCAS as usual. Um, write a strong personal statement, make sure it's um, it's accurate in terms of English. Uh, we look for those literacy skills from the very beginning. Um, talk about your commitment, why you want to be a teacher, why you're interested in it. Show your experience uh, and your transferable skills as well. Um, and give us an insight into why you think you you want to be a teacher. Um, we call a lot of people to interview um, and we like to interview everybody so that we can get a sense of whether you're going to be right for the course and right for primary teaching. So on the interview day, um, obviously it's a little bit different at the moment, so we're doing online interviews, but usually uh, we'd come, you'd come to Marjon uh, for a session and you'd have an individual interview where we ask you some questions about uh, becoming a teacher, the kinds of things you'd expect to be asked, I would hope. Um, and that's just with one of our tutors. It's very much more of a chat than a formal interview. Uh, we're keen to find out about you and your personality. And so we try to make you feel as comfortable as possible in that interview. And then we have a group task where uh, we ask you to teach something to uh, four or five other candidates in a small group, something that you're passionate about, that you're really interested in. So we can see how you interact with other people because there's lots of group work on the course and how you convey your passion and your interest for something. Uh, we have some members of uh, our schools come and help us with the uh, interviews. So some of the head teachers and mentors will come and be involved. Um, and we also give you an opportunity to uh, look around the campus, uh, meet with the student ambassadors um, and generally um, get a good feel of how we work at Marjon. So there's some further places to go. Um, obviously, you'll see on the website there's lots of interesting information. There's some nice videos there from our past students. Um, and uh, as Mark Andrews said, um, uh, there's the, uh, the opportunity for the Unibuddy chats through with Chloe and Christabel. Um, I'm also on there as a Unibuddy uh, member of staff, so you can always contact me through that uh, channel as well if you've got further inquiries. If you've got um, queries about the actual uh, qualifications and admissions, then uh, apply uh, email admissions. Uh, but do get in touch with Mark Andrew and myself if you have any queries, because we're quite happy to reply to those uh, and even set up a phone call or, or conversation with you. Thank you, Sally. That's lovely. Um, and now, any questions? Uh, we're here to take your questions. I'm going to um, to unshare my screen so that I can I can drop in and see what's been put in the chat. Uh, Simon and Chloe are here to answer questions as well. Um, so let's see what I can do. 
So the good news is here, Mark Andrews, we've had a nice flurry of questions coming through throughout the whole presentation, um, which has been amazing to see. So thank you everyone for kind of submitting questions as we go along and we'll try our best to answer all of those now if they haven't yet been answered throughout the presentation, because um, I know Sally picked one up just a moment ago. Um, so the first question that I do have here is in regards to placement um, and how far will people be expected to travel and will they need a car to get to placement? Sally, do you want to take that one? Yeah, there's, there's two or three placement questions which I can probably combine um, looking at those. So when we allocate the placements, um, we before you start the course, we'll ask you if possible, and that's going to be a bit difficult this year, I think, to try and spend a little bit of time in a foundation stage class uh, before you come, because that leads into our child development module. Um, and then when you come to Marjon, you will complete forms to say where you live um, or if you're on a campus and if you have a car um, or whatever, and then we will arrange the placements for you. We'll make sure that you are able to get to the placement. If you have a car, it will be uh, within an hour or 30 miles. Uh, we rarely have to go that far these days because we have a number of placement schools local that we use. Um, if you don't have a car, we will make sure that you can get to your placement school by public transport. So um, you don't need a car to get to placements. If you do have a, pl a car, then it's helpful. Um, Simon's been out in a small village school uh, this year for his placement. Um, and so has Chloe been out of, out of town. Uh, they've been, been able to use their cars to get there. Uh, but other students have used the bus or walked uh, or shared a car down to schools in town. So if you live further afield and you live uh, wider in Devon and Cornwall, say you live down in Truro, for example, uh, we'll place you if you want to be placed at home, we'll place you in a local school. So we have lots of contacts across the placement area um, and you can say where you would like to go. Um, we can't promise exactly where you will go and you won't get exactly where you, you want to go necessarily, but we will take all your um, considerations, uh, your, your requests into consideration. You don't have to go to London. Um, it's, it's an optional thing. Um, and so um, we, uh, have, we, we, we have someone who comes from London to talk about the, the opportunities in London and then you decide if it's something you'd like to do. When you go there, um, we normally send about six students per uh, second year placement and third year placement, and you will go and stay in student accommodation there, and we, the university, will pay for that. So you won't, will only be paying for one set of accommodation. Um, we rarely these days have to send students out to accommodation, and if we do, there'll be some support for that accommodation, but we haven't sent anyone out for the last couple of years into accommodation. So we would generally be supporting, um, allowing you to be staying at home or in your campus accommodation. So I think hopefully that um, covers the placement questions. Shall I just ask the pre, do the pre-course one while about it, Mark Andrew? Yeah, that would be good. Um, so someone's asked about pre-course work. Um, yes, there will be some pre-course work. Um, next Friday, we have our first um, app. What, I'm not sure what it's called, Sally. Um, <laughs> it's called preparing for your course. Preparing for your course session and at that point we will introduce the pre-course area to you and then you'll be sent um, a password uh, to the act to access the uh, the area and there we will make some suggestions for things you can be getting on with before you come in September. So we'll give a range of um, of opportunities for you to capture to, to do. Some of you won't have much time, some of you will have a lot of time and so therefore we can um, uh, make sure that you've you've got something to be getting on with before you come. OK, I've had a quick look down the question and answers, so I'm going to I'm going to pick a few up. Uh, somebody's asked about uh, if they want to teach in an infant school, which is better five to eleven or three to eight. That's a personal choice. If I was going into an infant school, would I would I be more interested in teaching the younger age children if in that case three to eight? Is there a possibility in the future that I would want to go into primary and junior, then I'd go to five to 11. But remember what we said, our first year is the same course. So so uh, uh, when you join us in September, you can say, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm thinking. I want to be an infant teacher. And, and you talk with your PDT, your professional development tutor, who will look after you throughout the course. But if you talk to them and say, this is what I'm thinking, then as the as the year goes on, whichever course you've you've started on, whether it's the five to 11 or the three to eight, you have that conversation towards the end of the year and we can help you make the correct decision then and we can transfer you 
from whichever course you are on onto the right one as you go into the second year. No problem with that. Um, ratio of seminars to lectures. There are some modules that are that are that are, are guided by here's um here's a lecture and a lecture maybe an hour an hour and a half. Uh, they're quite interactive as well, some of them. Uh, and then it goes into seminars and there'll be a seminar that follows up of about an hour and a half. Um, but quite a lot of our modules are practical, so so there are no lectures. It's about being in rooms with tutors in a smaller group session with with perhaps you know 20, 25 uh, up to about 30 at maximum uh, and working in practical activity uh, kind of bases. I don't know if, if, if Simon and Chloe would like to come in and say anything about that as well. <laughs> Yeah, I think one thing that I really enjoyed with the ratio of um, school placement and essays and things was that um, none of our essays would be due in during the bulk of placement. So we'd always have the opportunity to put our theory into the essays and our experiences into the essays to kind of show what we'd been learning in our time at school. Um, just to add on to that as well. Uh, where we had the, the initial lectures and then headed into the seminars, you can always just debate what you've been spoken to about. So you can compare ideas and um, that sort of always helps. So, yeah. That sounds good. That sounds good. Um, when on placement, what is school marginal work balance? Chloe's just mentioned that at the beginning of the year we do the timetables. You'll be able to see exactly where you are when you're in university, when you're in schools. We also produce the, the module guidance uh, and every module tells you what you're going to be doing in that in that module, what weeks you'll be on, what your what subject areas will be. You get the essay titles at the beginning of the module so you know exactly what you're working towards. And at the beginning of the year, we set the dates so you know all of the hand in dates throughout the year. So hopefully that allows you to to juggle. I mean, it says juggling essays and assignments from Marge on at the same time you don't need to juggle them. You can plan them in because we also know we're being realist here. We know that some of you will be working part time jobs and you'll you'll be kind of working on that as well. So so we make sure that that's really clear. Um, Sally, do we give unconditional offers? Um, well, all offers will be um, based on the interview. Um, now there are new, no professional QTS skills tests. If you have all your qualifications at that point, then you'll get an unconditional offer. Um, if you don't have all your qualifications, so you're waiting on exam results, then it'll be conditional on that. But when the results come in, and I know this year is slightly different, um, then we look at those results. And if you haven't quite made the grade that you were hoping to um, and you thought and you and you need for the course, we will look back over your interview um, paperwork and see how you performed. We'll look at your GCSE profile and we'll make a judgment as to whether um, we still think you are going to be able to uh, manage the course. So we know that sometimes things don't go to plan. Uh, when you're doing your A-levels or your other qualifications um, and it's about your potential to be able to complete the course. So we're not going to take somebody onto the course who we think is we're setting up to fail, uh, but we want to give people opportunities. So if we think you can cope with the course, um, then we most definitely will be offering you a place. OK, so if you're concerned about that, good thing to do is to talk to uh, one of us about it. Um, I also noticed a question about um, how soon after the interview we will know if you have an offer. Um, at the moment online we're doing that very quickly. I did an interview this morning. I've sent the decision over and it will be made this afternoon. Um, but on a traditional interview day um, it will be made within a day or two. OK, so it's pretty quick um, after that. Uh, we don't do online searches particularly on candidates unless there's anything <laughs> we might need to look out for. Um, but uh, we don't generally we don't generally do that. No. I, I am. I do teach the IT, and I have been known in one of the first sessions to uh, to do a quick picture search on candidates, uh, and then present it as as an introductory lecture, saying, "Actually, this is what if you put your name in, this is what you see." And for quite a lot of people, nothing comes up, but it's about knowing. It's 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 part of the the kind of staying safe online and the work that's done by CIOP, uh in education, making sure that you know if 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 you're concerned about that, then just have a chat about 
just have a chat about it because I can guarantee once your name is given to the primary school that you'll do your first placement in, the first thing the teachers are going to do is they're going to go online and have a look and see what you're doing. So, so we don't do. We, do, we don't do searches, but uh, just bear in mind of that. Um, what support is there for essay dissertation writing, especially if it's not the student's strong point? There is that, you know, the support that we offer, I hope uh, I'll start off. Um, the first the first session that we offer is through um, CO1. Uh, you have to do a piece of writing. It's 500 words. Uh, I think both Simon and Chloe kind of will will shudder at the thought of of doing that first piece and thinking, ah, oh, ah, oh, it's a real panic. How can I ever do this? Uh, and then you hand it in, and we mark overnight, and then we have a quick conversation with you, and and we've guided you, and we've we've structured the reading, and we've structured the writing, and you produce this piece of work, and 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 then we have a chat, and we say this is really good, this this can be better, this you can work on, and then you go away, and you 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 produce a, a second piece of work, and you. And you make it up to a thousand words and that becomes your first hand in and that's done before any other work is handed in the module leaders will then support you to do the to to, to do the writing your personal development tutor that will be assigned to you will support you throughout the course your dissertation at the end you're given a dissertation supervisor and that person will guide you through the process um, there are other sort of systems and, and things in play around the university such as the library uh, and the the, the the IT skills area uh, that will all be there to help you with your study skills to, to link into electronic resources to to doing work on word and PowerPoint and publisher and the support systems are I, I think quite amazing students what do you think about it um, yeah, so uh, the CO1 uh, module is really helpful. Um, like uh, has just been said, the 500 words, you, when you first get there and you're told that you're going to be writing this 500 word essay, you're, you're a little bit um, shocked by it. And obviously it's the first piece of writing, so you want to try and get it right. And you're not necessarily certain of what you're doing. But um, no, once that's done, um, the support is just amazing. Um, and I've definitely improved in my referencing and and being able to write an essay so so yeah yeah definitely i think the personal development tutors are really useful as well um they often say about sending a small piece of your work or a paragraph to them and they'll look over that a few weeks before the submission date which is really useful or even if it's just a small thing like one reference that you want to make sure that you've got it right they're really helpful with that that's fantastic. Um, a question there, will the first year course be online? Um, we're not intending to do the whole of a, a year online. We're setting our timetables at the moment to have people back on campus. The university is planning to come back onto campus in September. Uh, accommodation is open and people are being sent out their rooms. I know that rooms were sent out last week. Uh, we're looking at how we deal with that. Obviously, the, the, we're, we're guided by the government and by regulations. Um, we're looking at how we can we can put people into to groups and bubbles and work on, on on situations. There will be some modules that we decide that actually it will be easier for us. It will be safer for everybody to, to do that online. And what we're doing is we're looking at the years kind of the years we have and we're moving our modules about. So we're making sure that the modules that are best to move on to line that we can that we that we do that for for modules that have got the practical elements in we will be bringing you onto onto campus in in a safe and secure environment you know make sure that that happens uh, how will access to preparing for the course talk will there be an email sally i think there's an email coming out for that Yes, there will be. So I'll quickly put my camera on for those there. So as these are for our current applicants, so you'll receive an email tailored to you to invite you to your course talk. Um, so please keep an eye out for that email. It will either come today or at the start of next week and it will just be a link and you just need to click the link at the right time and it will take you straight through to the session. So no need to book onto that. Just keep an eye on your emails. That's grand. There's a can you do an overseas placement? We have in the past, we've historically had overseas placements and we've been working closely with, with schools in Germany and with Cyprus. Uh, we don't intend to do an overseas placement in this coming academic year. Uh, it's always been 
um, with with the links and and the, and the work that we do in schools and we look at the students we decide whether they are you know whether whether it's a suitable thing for them to do um, so London always happens overseas placement has happened in the past did happen last year uh, but we we always look at what is best for the trainees and what is safe for the trainees sometimes it's not always safe to send people out uh, do we offer a sandwich year Sally, sandwich year? Um, I'm guessing from that you mean uh, a year out in work experience, uh, I'm thinking. Um, no, not as such, because uh, the placements are spread throughout the course. So you do placements in every year. Um, as Mark Andrews explained, we um, have the placements taking place so that um, you uh, over the course of the three years will have placements in every term during the year so that you'll get experience of the whole school year and the final placement takes place in the first term so that when you come to apply for your jobs uh, later in the year you've already completed your placement and are able to uh, talk confidently uh, for interview so not a sandwich year as such no OK, that's fine. Uh, do you provide SEN teaching in this course? Uh, SEN teaching, there's a module based on special needs uh, uh, and disabilities and access and accessibility in the second year. Uh, there's the offer to do um, to, to, to go out into special schools in the in in the, the second year is that three week experience and and if you then want to 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 do special uh, educational needs as your final placement we can put you into a special school for the final 10 weeks you still have to meet the standards of the national curriculum or, or the teacher standards but yes SEN is part of what we do so so you can can do that now you have to bear in mind that when you go into school and you want to be an SEN coordinator there is additional master's credits that you would then need to work work for to get so we can't say that you're going to be an SEN specialist that's something that you then need to do when you go into school uh, and then a question here do you offer Camp America as part of a placement the enhanced placement that I talked about those three weeks where you go into an educational uh, uh, establishment we tend to suggest that if you're going to do that you do that in that year the the second year because from the May bank holiday right through to when you return to us at the end of September, that gives you a window of opportunity to do Camp America, the ideal time to do. Now, our three week, uh, what, what you've got to remember is our three week placement also has a PowerPoint presentation. You have to present what you've done, what you've learned, what you've, uh, uh, you've, you've got from it. And in the past, people who've done Camp America have worked out there and then have sent back their PowerPoint. So, so, so people have sent their little PowerPoint and said, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm getting out of it. And this is what I look forward to for the next two, two and a half months in, in, in Camp America. We also have people who go out to Helsinki and do work out there and they come back and do presentations. We had people who decided that for the summer, for the second year in the summer term, they were going to go and work in a nursery in Spain. Uh, so they had already gone out. They spent three weeks out there. And on the day of the presentations, they Skyped in to the presentation uh, kind of time. And the little ones in, in this Spanish nursery, they came on screen and they taught us how to sing Spanish nursery rhymes. So, so yes, things like that happen. And, and it's about this conversation. We're small. We know you all. We like you all. We want to do the best for you. So if that's about having those conversations about doing Camp America. One other thing is that the university supports Camp America and you can go forward and get a grant or a, uh, I think it's a, um, I, I'm not quite sure how much it is. I, I, I apologize for that. I don't know the answer for that, but there are grants that are available for that to happen. Um, is there anything else that we need to? Sorry, Mark, I was just say that the, the going places bursary, yes, just enables you to um, to possibly uh, access Camp America. Uh, we also have a, a, a setup with Camp America where we have some uh, priority places for some students uh, into special into certain camps. Uh, but the going places uh, bursary, I think up to about 500 pounds, which will support you with uh, some projects going abroad, uh, which students last year made great use of linked into the enhanced placement. That's great. Um, I noticed that we're kind of rapidly heading towards 1.30. Um, Simon and Chloe, is there anything that you'd like to add that we haven't covered? Um, Sorry, Simon. <laughs> I don't um, I don't actually know. Um, I just have to say that it's been, yeah, a really good first year that perhaps 
I don't think it always goes as the plan, but the support that you get through um, the different lecturers and your yeah, personal development tutors, it it will be what it is and it will be amazing whatever comes of it. So, um, yeah. Um, one quick thing just to add on to what Sally said about placement, which I thought might be quite useful to know, is um, I was put in a school that had just opened and it was obviously a drive to the school. Um, and there were four of us that were going to this school, but what I found was really useful to know that they won't leave you with just one driver for the four people. So there was two of us that could drive and it's nice to know that you've got that flexibility then that if two of you are staying to do an after school club or a breakfast club in the morning, you have that flexibility if you're not just relying on one person for the four of you. Thank you, Sally. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, just one last thing, really. We haven't really mentioned uh, that the university provides lots of additional support uh, for students with a range of additional needs. And if you're applying for the course and you um, have additional needs, so you might uh, be dyslexic or um, have other uh, particular learning needs, um, we encourage you to tell us about that because uh, we have great support services in the university. Um, and we can signpost you to those services from the very beginning. And it's far better to get that support from the start um, than to sort of pretend that that you don't need anything and then find that you do. So we would really encourage you to to do that. Um, and we have uh, lots of lots of students who we work with um, to provide that additional support for. And the university is very good at that. OK, I've just noticed a, another question that's coming. Can this course course also lead you to do a PGC in modern foreign language? Now, this is a this is a BEd course in primary, so 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 the person who's asking that question, they might want to just email me and, and we can clarify that. If you're thinking about doing a secondary course, uh, then then that's fine. Um, if, if you're thinking about teaching in a secondary school, then 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 perhaps a, a a language degree, a BA in language and then a PGC in secondary would be best. This course, this BEd course over three years will give you qualified teacher status. It will give you qualified teacher status. So you don't need to then go on and do a PGCE in a modern foreign language to teach. OK, so but you might want to you might want to email us individually and we can have a chat. We can set up a, a conversation and we can chat. Uh, and one of the last questions is, is that is, you know, you've seen us. This is a, one of the slides had 65 people on it, all talking in a Zoom meeting, celebrating the end of their course. How many people roughly are on our course? Uh, in a year group, we normally have about 60 people. So we've got 180 in our in our little family of Beard primary students on the undergraduate course. We form a family of teacher education. Our postgraduate primaries who spend a year at the university number about 50. We've got our school direct partners, uh, both secondary and primary who also come in and are part of our community. Uh, and we've got secondary PE and, and, and lots of other teachers that are working. So as a family, the Marge on Teacher Education Partnership, which is MTEP, what we called it at the university, at any one point there are about up to 500 people training to be teachers and you will be part of that family. We are a family, we are a partnership. I, I kind of like to think that that we're we're nice. The 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 parting shot is we look forward to seeing you. We we you know we're welcome to see you. If you think we're right for you, then get in touch and have a talk with us. If you want to be known, if you want to be liked, if you want to be part of our family, we'd love to see you. If you think you want to be one of those people who um who sort of disappear, who don't want to be known, who just want to kind of fly under the radar we might not be the place for you, OK? We will get to know you, you will get to be known, you will know everybody from year ones to year threes, all of the staff, we will look out for you. I think that's all we've got to say. It's been lovely having a conversation with you today. I've taken up an hour of your time. Do email us if you've got questions. I'd like to thank Sally and Sally and Simon and Chloe for being alongside me and we look forward to hopefully speaking with you in the future. Thanks ever so much for your time. Thank you.
Thank you, Mark Andrew. I'm just going to kind of do one last little wrap up as well. Um, thank you for your time as well, Mark Andrew. It was a really, really informative conversation and it was great. Um, all the questions that have been asked. So thank you to the attendees for engaging with us today and asking all the questions that they did have. Um, linking back into what the other Sally said, um, we do have a programme of different events happening um, for Marge on Live and some of those do include disability support, dis um, sessions on dyslexia and dyspraxia. So um, if you do have any queries and questions about that, please drop into one of those sessions um, and, and we can kind of start engaging with you now, um, even if it's prior to your application process or if you're due to start with us in September. Um, keep an eye on your emails as well for your preparing for your course sessions. Um, so once again, thank you everyone for joining us today um, and I hope you have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Bye bye.